present yourself and tell us about Desk Mag and Desk Wanted. Sure, my name is Joel. I'm one of the co-founders of Desk Wanted and Desk Mag. They're sister sites that both have everything to do with co-working. We started um, about a year ago. We launched, um, or we're starting to launch about a year ago, with Desk Mag, which uh, is an online news source about co-working. We collect statistics and information about co-working so that people who are wanting to start a space or who are in a space can get a better idea of how um, how the market's really working, uh, you know, use real statistics to back up their business plans when they're presenting their ideas to open a space, or just to understand how many people are in the movement and what's going on with it. Uh, I think at that last count, we're up over 800 co-working spaces worldwide, which is more than double the number of spaces a year ago. So we've seen this huge increase in the number of co-working spaces worldwide just in the last 12 months. Um, and we're expecting that to continue. But we're also expecting there's going to be a lot of people who make mistakes along the way because it's such a new industry and that um, there's going to be a lot to learn. So there are going to be a couple of spaces that close down, but we think it's important to report about that as well because people need to learn these lessons and we have to understand how a co-working space operates and how uh, it can do so effectively. And um, yeah. And what are the most common mistakes that you are encountering? Like, uh... um, Well... We often see that um, people start a space um, as a way of trying to give themselves a desk to work at without having to pay. So they have their own business that's got nothing to do with co-working and they decide to start a space. Um, and this can work well sometimes, but then sometimes it can also go badly if they lose focus and, and they don't focus on the um, building their community or on uh, promoting themselves or organizing the basic things like billing and invoicing. and um, so. If, if it's a solo founder who has another business, uh, it's really important that they don't just see the co-working space as a way of giving themselves a desk to work at, but it is actually its own entity and needs to be treated like that. Um, the uh, other mistakes, I guess, are just uh, not, not launching, launching before you have a community or launching before you, uh, you're in touch with the community. Um, Perhaps there are some cities and some spaces where you could just open the doors and people will flood in, but generally you have to do work first before you launch to make sure that there is a group of people there who will be willing to come in and use the space. And it can be something as simple as starting a regular jelly meeting in your area um, once a month just to start growing that, that base of, of uh, members who will eventually come into your, your space when it does actually launch. And how come an Australian ends up in Berlin interesting in himself in co-working? Um, I moved here just to get a different change of life, um, experience a different uh, pace of life. Berlin, as I'm sure you know, is a, a fantastic city with um, a great energy and lots of culture, and so I came here just to enjoy the lifestyle. Uh, while I was here, I met Carsten, who's the other co-founder of Desk One and Desk Mag. He had the ideas for the site. Um, I'm a journalist. Most of my life I've uh, written for newspapers, so he needed some help with... Um, with writing and English language communication, so he asked me to join, and, and uh, I realized that his idea was great, that, that this uh, movement is booming around the world and that it needs um, some attention, so we decided we'd make this together. Um, and uh, now Carsten focuses more on Desk Mag, and I focus more on Desk Wanted, which is our system where people can search and find spaces all over the world and, and read about them and, and get in touch with the, with the co-working spaces. But uh, right now, Desk Mag, uh, excuse me, Desk Wanted is more of a like a repository of spaces. It is right now. We're going to change that soon, so it's going to be um, a complete package uh, for co-working space user, uh, managers to use, so that they can manage their invoices, manage their co-workers, manage their billings, and receive bookings through Desk Wanted as well. Uh, so it's going to turn from just a, a guide to a tool. And uh, I don't know if you're aware, but there's a couple of competitors that sprang out of Startup Weekend Brussels in Brussels, for example, okay. like uh, Nomadesk, uh, yes, Nomadesk, and uh, I think the other one is called Nomadtime. Mm -hmm. Have you? How, how do you think? You see, what? What is the thing that makes uh, Desk Wanted special? Uh, what makes Desk Wanted special? We're, uh, I th what we're about to offer makes it special. We're about to become this system that they uh, co-working spaces can use to manage themselves entirely, not just their back end, but their front end, so they can use it to promote themselves, and then they can use it to organize themselves. So um, we also link in with Desk Mag, and because of Desk Mag, we've got um, this uh, real um, editorial um, reach and, and, and understanding uh, and reputation that, that we bring to 
to desk one as well because we're also researchers and and statisticians and we we are trying to study this industry not just profit from it you know we actually want to to understand it so that other people can understand it so we're hoping that through uh, desk mag people realize that we're there to actually assist the co-working community and that what we're building with desk wanted and its new management tool is something that they can also use effectively and it will also contribute to the understanding of the entire co-working industry because um, through Desk Wanted and the new, uh, the new management mechanisms, we're going to be able to get a much better insight about um, how co-working spaces are working financially. So we'll be able to offer some insight to new spaces and say, well, look, this percentage of spaces are operating on this model and this is how it's working for them. So I really think that we're going to be able to give a lot more back in terms of an understanding of, of how to actually financially run your space. Any trends in co-working that you see happening or that are easy to spot in your research? Yeah, there's, um, we're, we're sort of past now the, mo the moment where it's all very uh, community-based and now we're starting to see a lot more professional operators come in who want to turn um, co-working into sort of a, a chain business. I see a lot of, um, of chains starting where people say that they want to have you know a space in every city in the world and that they're going to have a branded you know flashy logo that's going to be represented everywhere and I don't think that's going to work I think it might work in small areas so we're going to have like maybe small chains within one city or within one region or between cities that have a lot of connections but this idea of some kind of global um, you know, Mick, Mick co-working is just, it won't, it won't really function very well. I, I don't think that's going to fly. But I do see this trend towards a bit more professional, not professionalization, but, you know, sort of a bit of a capturing of the, of the concept. Um, and I know a lot of people in the co-working community will be quite wary of that. They're going to be really against the idea of, of putting a flashy label on it and, um, and commodifying it because, of course, what's been built is really precious. It's a community-based thing. But I don't think they need to be scared because people will be able to tell the difference between an organic co-working space where all the members are very active and where, um, where you go and build networks and connections. That the difference between that and some kind of flashy place that, um, that's just there to, to take your money and, and, and you know, fit you in like a piece of cattle. So um, there's nothing to be worried about from a competitor that is trying to you know, go the commercial route. Um, if you've got a good community and a good feel in your space, people will be able to tell the difference. Okay, thank you. Okay. No worries.